Hi, I'm Dr. Alyssa Lunder. I've been practicing dermatology at Dermatology Partners in Wellesley, Massachusetts for the past 10 years. I went to medical school at Boston University School of Medicine, and I did my internship in internal medicine and a fellowship in phototherapy at Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital in Boston, and I did my dermatology training at Harvard at Massachusetts General Hospital. My practice is composed of both general and cosmetic dermatology. I believe that less is more. Skin care doesn't have to be complicated. With a few simple steps, you can have beautiful skin. I love dermatology because it's a visual field. You're treating things that you can see, and you can see a range of patients from really young to really old, from sick people to healthy people, and I love the cosmetic aspect of it. It's really fun making people look beautiful. You can visit Dermatology Partners on the web at dermatologypartnersinc.com. So today we're going to talk about skin care. There are many different lasers on the market and there are lasers that treat many different types of skin conditions. We have lasers that treat brown spots, we have lasers that get rid of dilated blood vessels, we have lasers that get rid of leg veins, lasers that get rid of wrinkles, you name it and there's a laser out there that can treat something. As a generalization, lasers tend to work better on fair skin people. So people with fair skin who are not tan tend to have better results and less side effects or complications than people with more pigment in their skin. If you're trying to get rid of brown spots, it works best on someone who is fair skinned, who has darker brown spots from sun damage. Sometimes if someone comes in with a tan in my office, we send them home and we tell them to come back in a few months when their tan is faded. You also want to make sure that you're going to the right provider. You don't want to go to someone who just bought a laser off the street and took a weekend course and hangs a certificate on the wall. Uh, dermatologists go through three years of training just in skin and then a lot of them will do a, an extra one year just learning how to do laser procedures. You don't want someone to accidentally laser over a melanoma where they thought that was a brown spot. So in general, when you're picking a laser, you don't want to look for price because sometimes a lower price will get you a lower quality laser treatment. Skin creams in general, they're thicker products. They have less water than skin lotion, so they tend to be thicker or a bit more hydrating. Creams are better for when you're really, your skin is really dry and dehydrated and you just need a little bit more boost. So you want to use a skin cream on areas of the body which are particularly dry. So for example, your hands and the, and the heels of your feet, those are perfect areas to use a skin cream. A lotion has more water. So it's absorbed in easier. And a lotion is better if you're using something in the summertime or if you just aren't that dry. In general, I recommend avoiding perfume lotions. Um, perfume lotions, although they may smell nice, they don't get you a lot of extra benefit. My favorite skin cream is CeraVe cream. It's incredibly moisturizing. It's time release so it works all day. And a trick is if you have really dry feet or dry hands, if you put CeraVe cream on and then you put on either gloves or socks and sleep, you are going to wake up with really moist hands and feet. People with a fair skin are a lot more susceptible to skin cancers such as basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma. So people with fair skin really have to pay a lot of attention to sun protection. So if you are someone with blonde hair, blue eyed, or red head and blue eyed, you really want to go above and beyond protecting your skin. Make sure you're using really good sun protection. Physical blocker sun protections like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are very helpful in seeking shade when you can and using sun protective clothing will really help protect your skin. Fair skin is sometimes, but not always, more sensitive. Fair skin can be more susceptible to rosacea, which is a type of acne where you get flushing and pimples. So for people who have rosacea or flush easily, you really want to avoid the triggers that cause rosacea flares. So you want to avoid alcohol, especially red wine. You want to avoid spicy food. You want to avoid hot drinks, anything with steam, anything that will make your face flush. So people with fair or sensitive skin have to be selective about what sort of products they use on their skin. You just have to go the extra mile in terms of protecting yourself against the sun and chemicals that you may react to. And if you have any questions, call your dermatologist.
People with sensitive skin have to treat their skin really gentle. You have to make sure you're picking the right gentle moisturizer. Sometimes you may want to use products that are meant for babies. But gentle cleansers such as Cetaphil um, or Dove for sensitive skin tend to work really well on people with sensitive skin. You want to um, test out any sort of products that you use on your arm first to see if it's something that you can tolerate. So before you take a cream and put it all over your face and find out that it gives you a rash, you want to test it out on your arm first. You also want to see if there are foods that you're eating that are going to aggravate your skin and make it more sensitive. So you may want to avoid red wine and spicy food, which can cause breakouts in some people. And when you are picking out a sunblock, people with sensitive skin tend to tolerate the physical blockers better than the chemical blockers. So look for ingredients that are have titanium and zinc oxide rather than the chemical blockers. What's even better is if you have sensitive skin is to use sun protective clothing. Um, a big hat and an SPF shirt will be much better tolerated by your skin than some of the chemicals that may irritate you. So skin care does not have to be complicated. If you follow just a few easy steps, you can have beautiful skin. So there are four main things you want to think about. You want to protect your skin, you want to moisturize, exfoliate, and repair your skin. First is protect your skin. Um, nothing causes more age spots and wrinkles than the sun. So you want to make sure you're using a sunscreen all year round. Whether you're just going to the grocery store and going to be in the sun for five minutes, or if you're spending a day at the beach. Because sun exposure is cumulative throughout your entire life. And the more sun exposure you get, the more wrinkled you will be. So it's really important that you hydrate your skin because hydrated skin looks a lot younger, it looks a lot more moist, and you'll just have a more beautiful complexion. So you wanna make sure you're moisturizing twice a day. So after you wash your face, you're going to put a moisturizer in the morning and then again at night. Then you also wanna exfoliate your skin. And the best way to exfoliate, or the easiest way to exfoliate, is just to use a simple chemical exfoliator like glycolic acid. Glycolic acids are just creams that you use on your skin at night and it just helps you get rid of that outer dead layer of skin and your skin looks so much fresher and beautiful underneath. So that's something that you do at night. And then in addition you also want to help repair your skin. So almost every woman over the age of 20 that's not pregnant wants to be using a topical retinoid, either an over-the-counter retinoid under the trade name of Retin-A or Renova or generic tretinoin or using an over-the-counter retinol. And there's been evidence to show that these products really help um, boost up the collagen in your skin and really repair the damage that's been done. So if you just remember to protect your skin, moisturize, exfoliate, and repair, your skin will be beautiful. The best way to get rid of skin spots is number one, to stay out of the sun so you don't get them in the first place. But if it's too late and you've already developed these sun spots and skin spots, um, there are a few things that you can do to help erase them. However, if it's too late and you have brown spots all over your skin, there are a few things that you can do. One of the most effective treatments you can do is something called the intense pulse light or the IPL laser. And this is a really simple treatment that we do. We do it on the face, the chest, and the back of the hands, and it lightens the brown spots. The brown spots will get temporarily darker, they get a little bit scabby, and in a few days they really lighten up. The laser just traces over the skin. The laser treatment tends to be repeated. Most people do a series of two or three treatments, and the results are just fantastic. If laser is not in your budget, then you can also treat these skin spots chemically. You can use products that contain ingredients like 4% hydroquinone, um, Obagi and Triluma being two of the trade names. You just use the creams for approximately eight weeks and they will help lighten it. They may not give you exactly the same results as the laser, but they will definitely provide good results. So if you wanna have clear skin, you can have clear skin. It takes a little bit of work, a little bit of effort, but it's completely doable. Skin cancer is becoming an epidemic around the world, so you really wanna do whatever you can to protect your skin against skin cancer. The most important thing that you can do is use sun protection. So when you're going outside, if you're going to the beach, you want to make sure you're using a good broad-spectrum sunscreen. You want one that's protecting your skin against the UVA rays, 
as well as UVB rays. One of my favorite sunscreens are the physical blockers, the ones that contain zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Sun avoidance is great. Avoid going outside during the peak times when the sun is brightest. You also want to make sure you're using sun protective clothing. So there are a few clothing lines that make clothing that have SPF in them. And they make it so much easier because then you don't have to deal with all the um, messy sunscreen. You also want to seek shade. So go outside as much as you want, you know, enjoy the pool, enjoy the beach, but just do it with protection. Get a big beach umbrella, a big broad rim hat will really help you a lot. There are titanium dioxide umbrellas on the market which are just fantastic. Not only will they give you shade, but they also keep you 10 degrees cooler in the sun. Sunburns really increase your risk of skin cancer. So most people get their sunburns on the bridge of their nose, on their cheeks, and that's why the incidence of skin cancers in those areas are much higher than other parts of the body. Then you also want to make sure that you're checking your skin on a monthly basis. And you want to make sure that you're looking for anything that's changing, growing, bleeding, anything that wasn't there before. If you notice any new red bumps, any pink scaly patches, and any dark mold. In addition to your monthly skin exams, you really want to see your dermatologist or your primary care doctor for a yearly skin check. Because when skin cancers are caught early, they can really save your life. So sunspots are brown spots that appear in the sun exposed areas of your body. You commonly can see them on the face, on the anterior chest, and on the back of your hands. You want to use sunblock, sunblock, sunblock. When you look at sunspots, it's not aging that causes them, but rather the sun. For example, if you look at your skin on your chest compared to the skin on your buttocks, you'll see that the sun is really what, what's causing the brown spots to appear. So you want to make sure you're using a good sunscreen. Even better than that are sun protective clothing. There's some clothing lines that are made specifically with SPF ingrained into the fabric, and that is a much easier and better way to protect yourself against the sun. So you want to seek shade whenever possible. When walking down the street, if one side of the street is sunny and the other one's shady, pick the shadier side of the street. You also can use a titanium sun umbrella. Those are fantastic umbrellas that are made to reflect the sun and protect your skin. Sunblock you ideally want to reapply every two to three hours. In general, it's about one ounce or a shot glass full of sunscreen to cover your entire body. And if you go swimming or if you're getting excessively sweaty, you have to remember to reapply more often. Some acne is unavoidable. Acne lots of times is caused by hormones and everybody knows that hormones can go up and down depending on your age, the time of the month, and for a variety of other factors. So at times acne is just a part of life. But there are some things that you can do to minimize the amount of acne you get. The first thing is to choose the right cleanser. I recommend using either a salicylic acid cleanser, Neutrogena Acne Wash being one of my favorites, or using a benzol peroxide wash. I prefer to use a salicylic acid cleanser on the face, but if you have acne that's on your chest or your back, I would go for the strongest benzoyl peroxide wash that you can. I would find a 10% benzoyl peroxide wash. And the key is to leave it on your skin for about five minutes before you wash it off. One thing to note about benzoyl peroxide is that it can bleach your clothes and bleach your washcloths. So just be careful of that. Another way to prevent acne is to choose your hair products carefully. Lots of times different hairsprays, mousses, and gels, when they get onto the skin, clog your pores. You want to make sure that all products you use on your skin, makeup, foundations, anything you're using on your skin says non-comedogenic on it. Non-comedogenic means that it won't clog your pores. If using salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxides aren't enough to get rid of your acne, um, you may want to see a dermatologist. Dermatologists have plenty of both topical and oral medications that can help your acne. Uh, we use lots of topical antibiotics. We use retinoids such as uh, Differin and Retin-A that help improve your acne. And for some patients, they'll need to go on oral antibiotics. In extreme cases, we'll use a medication called Accutane. Most skin rashes are not serious. However, there are a few dermatology emergencies which you do want to seek medical attention sooner than later. One of the most common ones that we see in our office is shingles or herpes zoster. Shingles or herpes zoster is when you start feeling a burning pain or tingling and development of blisters, usually in a line and it's just on one side of the body. 
Shingles is a reactivation of the chicken pox virus, and it tends to be redness, pain, or itch, um, and eventually blisters that you develop anywhere on your body, and it typically forms a line, and it doesn't cross the midline of your body. It can be especially serious if you develop this near the eye area, as it can cause blindness. So if you think or have any sort of suspicion that you could have shingles, you want to call your doctor immediately. With shingles, if you treat it within 48 hours, you're going to have much less long-term sequela than if you wait for treatment. The other main dermatology emergency that we see that can be serious are drug rashes. And drug rashes can happen from anything. They can happen from herbal supplements, from vitamins, from Tylenol, but the most uncommon medication that causes a drug rash are antibiotics. The rashes typically start after you've been on the medication for a few days, and the rash can be redness that you can develop anywhere on your body. Drug rashes that are extensive can cover you from head to toe. If you develop blisters with this rash, that's when it can get serious. So if you start developing blisters in your mouth or your genital area, you wanna call your doctor immediately in addition to stopping the medication. So if you develop a skin rash that causes swelling or difficulty breathing, you wanna call 911. So there are a few really simple things that you can do to make your skin not dry. The most important thing you wanna do is make sure you're choosing the right cleanser. So you wanna make sure your cleanser is a gentle cleanser. My favorite ones are Dove for Sensitive Skin in the Blue Box or Cetaphil. Then after you've picked your cleanser, you wanna make sure you're moisturizing correctly. So after you get out of the shower, you don't want your shower to be too hot or too cold. You want to take a towel and just pat your skin dry. And then you're gonna seal in that moisture with a moisturizer. My favorite moisturizer to use for the body is CeraVe cream. So you want to use CeraVe cream over your whole body um, twice a day. So in the morning and at night. Then you may want to try using a 1% hydrocortisone for a few days. And if that still isn't working, you want to make sure you see your dermatologist. So dry skin is usually worse in the winter months. So in the winter, it's really helpful if you run a humidifier in your bedroom. And especially if you're going somewhere cold, like going skiing, you may want to make sure you're using more moisturizer more often. So itchy skin is one of the most common things that we see in a, the dermatology office. Itchy skin tends to occur if you're in a really dry climate or if it's cold outside. And then also as you get older, your skin tends to be more itchy because you, as you get older, you lose moisture in your skin and that can make you drier. So the most important thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're choosing a really gentle cleanser. You don't wanna use anything too harsh. So some of the soaps that are like antibacterial soaps, if you're itchy, that's just gonna make you itchier. So you wanna make sure you're using something really nice and gentle. The best ones to use are gonna be Dove for Sensitive Skin or Cetaphil or CeraVe cleanser. And you don't want your showers to be too hot or too cold. And after you get out of the shower, while your skin is still damp, you just wanna towel dry your skin, and then you wanna seal it in with a moisturizer. You wanna put the moisturizer on your skin, I preferably at least twice a day. If those tips aren't helping, the next step after that is using one of the anti-itch creams with menthol. My favorite anti-itch cream is one called Sarna Lotion. It smells a little bit, but once you put it on, it feels really great. And a tip with the Sarna Lotion is if you keep it in the refrigerator and you put it on your skin cold, it will feel much better. Now, if your itch is caused by something different than, other, than your typical dry skin, for example, if your itch is caused by having an allergic reaction, you may be developing hives. Hives are red, itchy bumps that you can develop anywhere on your body. Now, those hives will be best treated with taking oral Benadryl. You don't wanna use the topical Benadryl cream, but you wanna use the, the pill or the liquid Benadryl. And if it's still not going away, then you wanna see your physician. So Retin-A or Renova is a medication that we commonly use in dermatology. We use it frequently to help treat fine lines and wrinkles, as well as acne. So these are great treatments, but they have to be used correctly. You have to remember that this is a pretty strong medication, so more is not better. What you wanna do is you wanna take the size of a small green pea, put it on the tip of your finger, and gently dab it on different areas of your face, almost like if you're applying moisturizer. You wanna avoid the corners of your mouth and the corner of your eyes, and then you wanna slowly rub it into the skin. After it's rubbed in, you wanna apply a moisturizer on top. Another way that you can apply this is to take the same 
small pea size amount into the palm of your hand, mix with some moisturizer, mix it together, and then rub it into your face. If your skin is getting too red or irritated, you want to stop a few days and give yourself a break. And generally, when you start using these medications, you want to start using them two or three times a week and gradually work yourself up into every night. So when using this medication, it's important to remember that your skin is going to be more sensitive to the sun, so make sure you're using proper sun protection. And if you're doing any sort of cosmetic procedures, such as waxings or peels, you want to stop a few days before. And if you're pregnant, you want to discontinue using the medication immediately. So these medicines can have excellent results, but it has to be used properly.